Hello, everyone. I'm Megan McGurman. And I'm Michael Chesney. Thanks for joining us for another episode of For the Love of Health, brought to you by Christiana Care. From chat GPT to self-driving Teslas, in some ways, it really feels like we're living in the future we were promised in movies and television. I was hoping for flying cars and jetpacks, but all right. Well, we can't have everything. But technology we do have is having a huge and growing effect across the healthcare industry. And today we're going to talk about the impact of one category of tech, robots. For that conversation, we're joined by Kat Collard, Christiana Care's Chief Nursing Informatics Officer, and Susan Burkhoff, PhD, Program Director for Technology, Research, and Education at Christiana Care. Kat and Susan, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks thank for you. having us. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. So let's start big picture. How are robots used in day-to-day life in healthcare? Robots are used in many different ways in healthcare. Very typically and historically, they've been used in the operating room to help the surgeons with surgery. And of late, we've been using um, a robot to help deliver supplies and equipment uh, to nursing units. Um, We don't call them robots. We call them cobots because this has been changing the landscape a little bit with use of robotics. Uh, and they are more uh, humanoid, also um, co-workers. We consider them co-workers. Mm-hmm. Susan, tell us, how long have robots been involved in the healthcare space and been used across health systems? As Kat mentioned, with uh, in surgery, they've been used since 1985. Wow. So they have been assistants to the surgeons. There's different types of robots out there. So one is uh, a modular robot. And that helps with rehabilitation. So think of exoskeletons, where uh, people who are paralyzed, they can get up and help them move. Um, Also prosthetic limbs. And then we have uh, service robots that can help with deliveries, uh, cleaning of rooms, cleaning the floors. And then there's also social robots as well. So they can provide comfort um, to people and they can answer questions for them as well. So they're used across um, all of healthcare and in different capacities. How long have robots been service robots on that patient unit side of healthcare? With just being delivery kind of robots, it's been since about 2014 that they started testing and started using them, but it isn't. It has not really um, become more prevalent until more like 2018, 2019, 2020. And so Christiana really is on the cutting edge of using these kind of robots, looking at healthcare waste. And if you have to wait for something, I mean, someone busy taking care of a patient and now they need something and they have to wait for it. And now it's delayed. So it could be a medication. You're delayed. Uh, administering that medication. Or if they have to run and go get something, it takes them off the floor. Having nurses or nursing staff off the floor it takes them away from the patient, patient care, um, and, and then also skill misalignment as well. We want everyone working to the top of their training. So if there's work that they should not be doing and a robot can do, you can offload that. And, um, you know, let's offload that so then they can be, you know, working to the top of their, their training. And you're both experts in this in your day-to-day work because we're using robots or cobots here at Christiana <laughs> Care every day. Tell us about Moxie. Well, Moxie uh, has been developed for healthcare and specifically for nursing. We know in the nursing body of knowledge, nurses spend 33% of their time delivering or going and fetching, hunting and gathering supplies and equipment. So that's what Moxie is really designed to do. The hunting and gathering piece is probably the easiest, most straightforward thing for a robot to do. If you were to pick something that would be more complicated, it would be sending a robot into maybe a storeroom to take things off the shelf to bring to a person, to a nurse. That's a very complicated process because the robot would have to know all of those things. I would say they probably would be in a bin and there would be a barcode on the bin, but what happens in real life is that those bins get mixed up, that somebody takes something and then decides later, oh, I didn't need that, I'll put it back, but they don't put it back in the right bin. So then the robot will go in and pick up, pick up something and take the wrong thing, but not even knowing. So I think that the hunting and gathering and the, the driving from point A to point B is the most straightforward thing that uh, the robots can do Because at the same time, we have to get them acclimated to hospital and get people acclimated to the fact that they're here. That's Mm -hmm. the biggest step, right? And that's the most simple step, but at the same time, having them work. So hunting and gathering is low-hanging fruit. Can you tell us how big a basket of fruit we're talking about? Oh, it's overflowing. (laughs) (laughs) Because we have three cobots, 
and they have done over 20,000 deliveries over 460 days. That's actually how long we've had them. They worked about 13,000 hours and have traveled many thousands of miles throughout our hospital here in Newark. Benefit of having COBOT is we have had staffing issues since COVID. Um, and these COBOTs are not going to replace nurses by any stretch of the imagination, but they do work 22 hours a day. They require a two hour full charge, much like a Roomba. What can the robots and COBOTs do now that they weren't doing in 2014, 2015? So they actually used to be on a track. Think of a like uh, like a railroad track or a tram where it had to physically follow a track. Wow. And now it's digital mapping and they just follow the Wi-Fi now. And and so a mapping can change depending on the needs or again, we're in the hospital environment, it's very dynamic, things are changing. We saw um, in in our um, our own journey here that one of the units they were um, doing construction, they they pushed out a wall and so the robot had to navigate around that wall. If you had a, a physical track, what are you going to do? So, uh, so that that definitely has been an evolution. That it's more dynamic than it used to be. It was very prescriptive well, on its robots track. Robots follow lidar, which is like ro- robot radar. So it's similar to uh, Google Maps. It has uh, electronic mapping, so it knows where where the road is. Um, you don't see it, but the robot sees it, and so um, that's how it, it gets around autonomously. Things have needed to get around the hospital long before robots were here to help. How has that worked for the many, many years prior? Before we had cobots here, it would either be humans that would move, um, you know, supplies, equipment around, um, or is our tube system that we have that goes all over the hospital. But certain things can't be tubed, and you know, for um, you know, we have people who move equipment around, but also they have to move patients around. When I've been out watching Moxie work, I've seen a number of caregivers from across the system use Moxie in yes. really significant Absolutely. ways. Yes, we have we have um, uh, patient uh, belongings that get sent to uh, the front desk or vice versa up to a unit. In the previous years, the nurses would really a lot of times be taking something, taking labs down to the lab or. Take, going down to the pharmacy to pick up medications. Sometimes it would be um, an aide or a clerk, but a lot of times it would be the nurse would be off the unit doing that. So they're not having to do that. The other piece that we know uh, in our body knowledge, and Susan can, can share a little bit more, is that patients uh, have better outcomes when nurses have their eyes on them. So what we want to do is make sure that um, we keep the nurses as close to the bedside as, as we can. So uh, the robots will help with that. Susan, tell us about that, uh, the better outcomes that Kat mentioned. Uh, nurses or nursing caregivers, they don't have to leave the unit to go, to go grab something that they can call Moxie, and then Moxie can come bring it to them, and they can stay in the unit and stay there delivering care or also providing self-care as well. To have a little bit of downtime in a very busy shift you know, um, helps our caregivers. Moxie's task is very simple take things from here to there. Yes. But making that happen is actually really complicated. Oh, Can yes. you talk to us about some of the challenges? Cobots in general, they need a human on each end. So Moxie would be dispatched to inpatient pharmacy. And so it needs a human to then load up her, her drawers and then, then she goes to her destination. But then you also need one to unload her as well. But along those ways, we're in a, a hospital that was built in the 1980s smaller corridors. There's a lot of moving people. It's a very complex environment where there's a lot of traffic, a lot of people moving. And so the robot has to navigate all around that. And then also with the elevators, it needs help to get onto the elevators, know what floor to get off of. So it does need, at this point in time, some human help for these uh, challenging pieces of travel. We're working um, with IT to, with the company of, for the elevators um, to get the uh, cobot to go on and off the elevators autonomously. And it's a lot more complicated. It involves other people and people who don't need to know or be involved in whether Moxie goes on or off an elevator. So Moxie's got to navigate that. One of the things that we put together was the, the idea that we could actually have Moxie go out and get something from orders that a doctor puts in an electronic record. So we use a Cerner system. Um, and when we started this, we had conversations with many of the vendors that we use so that um, we can communicate with these other systems to the robot to go do things. It takes the nurses 
uh, work out of it, out of requesting the robot. The robot will automatically go and get something based on something that's been ordered for a patient. And there is nobody else in the country that's working on that. What will that mean long term? Through our research work, we are looking at what the impact of these cobots have on the nursing workforce and for nursing practice and nursing outcomes as well. And so we're hoping that with this automation, it reduces their cognitive load that they don't have to worry about that. It's one less thing that they you know, should be doing and that they need to do. This is so cutting edge that we're still figuring out the science and we're building. I mean, it takes time and we're going layer by layer and building and learning. Uh, but what we are driving towards is definitely learning at the impact of these cobots. We're talking about right now the ability for robots to be predicting what humans need from mm-hmm. them. That mm-hmm. sounds incredibly complicated. It is. Yes. <laughs> it is very complicated <laughs> because sometimes humans don't know what humans want. And, and with Kat's informatics team, I mean, they have tr- strategically picked you know, certain um, skills and tasks that the cobots can do so we can at least start testing mm-hmm. that. You know, is this working? Do we need to make tweaks? And then we can build on that and keep adding more skills. With implementing anything, you want to start with the easiest thing, right? Thing that doesn't have as many roadblocks and complications to start. Uh, And if you can be successful at that, you just keep building on top of that. One of my analysts has picked three fairly simple, straightforward tasks, and um, we're very close to doing that. What is the evolution of robotics in healthcare three, five, ten years from now? I do not believe that this is the robot you're going to see in 10 years, probably not even five years. Because one of the exciting things about doing this is that we're learning so much. The most important thing is the feedback we're getting from the nurses, like what they really need this robot to do. Um, And we're feeding that information back to the company. Um, And there are other uh, companies and robotics programmers around the country who are paying a lot of attention to this. I know that because we talked uh, at several conferences where they were attending and really, really interested in this. So I don't think five or ten years from now you're going to see the same robot. You're going to have a little more sophistication on it. But a lot of it has to do with the work that we're doing here and the research that we're doing here um, to get the outcomes for the current robot and see where we can build on that. So to me, that's a really, really important work that's being done. Um, and I, I think you're going to see something very different, much more sophisticated. And I think uh, using robots is going to be shifting more into the home. Like we want to keep people healthy at home and having robots there to support them, to keep them independent, healthy as they can be, and to assist them with their activities of daily living. So I think robots will be shifting that way as well. So I would be really remiss if I didn't say this um, because our our VP of Home Health, we already have a robot in the home. So um, we're already moving that way. And Uh, That's the great thing about Christiana Care is that we're really innovative and really open-minded to think about those things and really get them moving forward. So can we address maybe the digital elephant in the room? Are these robots coming for people's jobs? No, they are not. Is my doctor going to be a robot? No. No. They they can't critically think. They do not have that human element, that human touch. Uh, you know, to offer comforting words. You need that human touch, that human caring. They will yep. never replace um, that part yep. of healthcare ever. Yep. The nurses, human to human interaction, you can't match that, right? Kat and Susan, thank you both so much for your time, and we look forward to more Moxie in the future. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. And if you'd like to see Moxie at work, we have links to videos in the show notes at christianacare.org slash podcasts. There you'll find our episode archive and links to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts so you can subscribe and leave us a review. Absolutely. And connect with us between episodes on Christiana Care's social media channels. Following us on social is another way to make sure you know when we release an episode and we'll be back with a new one in two weeks. Until then, thanks for joining us for for the the love love of health. health.